So a little bit about myself, I'm 46 years old, currently weighing 129 kilos. Originally, I was 144 kilos. We've had a history in the family of obesity and diabetes. I tend to associate my eating habits with emotional eating along with really poor timing in that I, <laughs> you know, Netflix and chill after 9 p.m. with, uh, you know, any snack that you really want. Yeah, my mistake. My eating habits are more associated with emotional eating and bad timing even though a lot of people think the emotional eating is bullshit. And that's okay, because if I had a better way, or if I chose a better way of dealing with a lot of stuff in life, then maybe I wouldn't be sitting, you know, where with a bowl of ice cream crying into it like uh, Bridget Jones. But anyway, ever since I was 17 years old, I've been into resistance training, so very heavily into the gym. Uh, even all the way through to my 20, through my 20s and early 30s, I was going to the gym between four and six times a week. I'll be brutally honest, I did not really take much consideration into my diet at the time and utilized exercise and just constant movement as the catalyst for maintaining my weight. Even still, I'm you know, completely aware of the fact that a lot of the time it's, it's more to do with diet than it is exercise. You know, it's 90% it's diet and 10% exercise, even though you know, I'm still stupid enough to make dumb decisions. But I have definitely changed since being on this medication. In conjunction with currently taking the Ozone Peak, I was initially on uh, Olmostatin, which is a medication for your blood pressure. On top of that as well, there's been a cholesterol medication called rosvastatin, and that's helping quite uh, quite considerably as well. And once I began to reach a plateau with Ozempic, my endocrinologist put me on metformin. So there we go, they're the three other major medications on top of the OZM peak that I'm currently taking, for which my doctor has actually said to me that if I was to get the gastric bypass surgery, I would mitigate all of that medication out of my system. Um, so that is another option to take into consideration um, if OZM peak does not work consistently over the next uh, 12 months, 10 years, 20 years, rest of my life, as deep as my pockets will go with my bank account, especially if you're here in Australia, which is okay. Cheaper than it is in America, because apparently if you're in America, it's about $1,300 for the OZM peak pen, which will last you probably about a month, whereas in Australia, it's about $130, $140, which is considerably less, and goes to show you that we're in a better state than most Americans are currently with medications. And their health system overall. So back in May 2023, I was officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It was no surprise to me as I was having increasing levels of fatigue. That was a major concern for me to be really getting on top of having consistent blood tests to actually see that a lot of issues were starting to permeate my lifestyle and choices overall to the point where it was recommended to me to start on Ozen Peak in August of 2023. 23. Being diagnosed with the, the diabetes was a bit disappointing, but at the same time, I, I kind of expected it. Yet, I'm still able to regulate my sugars quite effectively, believe it or not, with the kinds of food that I eat now, which is even better than what it was. Um, but I'm very fortunate that I haven't gone to an insulin-based uh, medication for diabetes, as my mother had for many years. And she actually did have gastric bypass surgery to then get off insulin and go down to uh, tablets, uh, one tablet a day. I was on Ozempic peak from August to November 2023 when there was a mass global shortage of the medication because celebrities were abusing the privilege as well as some people that might have been abusing the privilege for vanity issues or for their own personal means that I'm um, not going to divulge in here. And what I found that it was extremely effective, but it did have the inherent side effects that I did experience. What I did find was that there was an element, a strong element of uh, not being nauseous, headaches, very strong reflux in the evenings, or when you chose to chose to snack consistently at a late time, you would I would find that I was waking up at two or three in the morning, and food almost felt like it was at the top of my throat, and I either wanted to vomit or I had to sit up and and take a quick ease or just some type of and acid to actually get rid of that pain. Having realized that over time, I began to realize it's more associated with the timing of the food that I was having because I was always eating and snacking after 9 p.m., which is not good and just led to me feeling very uncomfortable. So if I wanted to continue doing that every day, I would be extremely uncomfortable. There was one moment where I felt strong chest pain and I admitted myself into the emergency department. This has only happened once and it's never happened again and it was a feeling of reflux but it was 
was so strong that it was sitting there for two hours and anything that I tried, it did not get rid of it. But I went to the doctors, I oh, sorry, I went to the emergency, got the all clear. They said there's absolutely nothing wrong. It was just a strong case of reflux. And I'm like, great, thank you. I appreciate that. So, so very fortunate, but it was a bit of a, Bit of a, uh, a bit of wake up call, I guess you could say. We're taking the meds and just um, continuing to think, yeah, I, I could still maintain this lifestyle of having snacks and watching movies late at night more than I usually have. So that definitely changed. So one of the major things that happens with the Ozem pick is that it slows down your metabolism. So basically, when you when you eat food, you don't eat as much as you usually would because it makes you feel like you're more full, which is which is great. But making sure that you have good nutritional content in the food that you consume determines how you actually feel with regards to those inherent side effects. So if you consistently want to have Hungry Jacks, Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's, charcoal chicken and chips, which I love, uh, you want to have something like that every single day, then I guarantee you will constantly feel very ill. You'll feel constantly nauseous, you'll feel sick, you'll feel bloated. And the fact that the nutritional quantity, quality of those foods uh, will diminish your, your outcomes with regards to consistent weight loss. So it's recommended to have uh, a lot of vegetables, some proteins, little fats and little amount of carbs. So if anything, it's almost very similar to having a high protein, low carb diet and intermittent fasting. That's probably the best way I can really uh, explain that the way it is. And I have had success with intermittent fasting as in, you know, I wouldn't eat anything until, you know, wake up at a nominal time, you know, usual time would say eight, nine o'clock in the morning and not have anything to eat till about one, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That doesn't mean you control yourself. You should be controlling yourself, but it doesn't mean you can't uh, divulge a little bit too much after that time as well, but provided you're using the right you know, timing effectively will determine the success of those results as well. So the side effects are, are one thing. There's another element as well I've seen on another podcast where they, the medication thickens the lining of the intestines. So this works in conjunction, I guess, with slowing down of your metabolism and then not allowing as much nutrients to actually pass through your intestines, which does result in constipation. And constipation is a very real thing as well. When you begin to feel full much more quicker than usual, you'll actually find that when you go to the toilet, your the stool, you know, your poos, your stool will be significantly less because you're consuming less and your body's absorbing as much nutrients as possible and the stool is quite small to the point that it won't actually pass through the whole length of your intestine so um, have a laxative uh, periodically to, to help get things through or have a big meal if you if you can stomach it um, and then you'll find you'll, you'll pass stuff through quite quite well what does the future hold well so as stated earlier I was on the medication from August 2023 to November so that a total of four months I found that I had more success in that period than resuming the medication in February 2024 so in four months I was able to lose about 12 kilos and get down to 132 kilos with the short break due to the sh global shortage I was I put on four kilos so I was a little bit concerned only because of the fact that when the medication wore off the appetite came back the habits returned the habits were kind of I'll be honest with you the habits was, were there but consuming more made the, made it a problem again because up here I had habits that have been there for at least 20 30 years that I chose to that I've chosen to let control me me and my life overall so the lack of willpower life stresses bad timing with regards to when I choose to eat are the major factors I effectively need to change still even to this day but I'm human if there's going to be a manufacturer of foods that are going to be a new flavor I'm going to try it but I need to say to myself I don't need that I need to stay away from aisles 1 to 13 in a majority of supermarkets and say in the fruit and veg section you produce and that's it almost like living off the land but inside of a supermarket because I'm not going to be into gardening anytime soon or owning any cows but anyway the future looks positive I must admit in a nutshell but for me personally I'm, I'm very, I am optimistic I'm optimistic about a lot of things uh, if I continue to exercise as consistently as I do now because I'm now training with my nephew which is a great source of motivation with regards to actually getting me to the gym uh, more consistently than I have in the past and teaching him how to do some stuff but also really just getting I'm in that phase again of feeling the passion and a desire and the, the positive aspects of, of actually training so maintaining that and being mindful of how my body feels when I consume foods and the time in which I 
want to eat uh, they're going to be the keys with regards to improving my quality of life whilst on Ozempic. I personally don't want to be on it for a very long time one because it's quite expensive if you think to yourself what you could be spending you know monthly on you know you could be buying some decent quality food but look put it this way there's people out there that, that are probably healthier than me in some ways or skinnier slimmer that are smokers that buy packets of cigarettes that are, that are like $50 like to drink and also you know buy as much more alcohol than I do over a monthly period the fitness industry themselves and the the prices of supplements overall is equal or even more than what Ozempic costs then I'm going to be on Ozempic because I believe it's working for me so that's where I'm currently at with it as I said I was started off at 144 kilos and I'm down to 129 kilos now I believe I'm on the right track getting constant blood tests done seeing my GP appointments with the endocrinologist don't live far from the emergency department if i need it but you know i've got you know i believe that it's working for me so i can't speak for you but the only thing i can really suggest that you do is think about it research it as much as possible talk to your doctor about it talk to your family try it see how you feel really reevaluate i guess your lifestyle choices just as i constantly do now no one's perfect i'm probably more perfect than you no i'm kidding <laughs> No, no one's perfect. We're all going to, we're all learning. Everyone is learning from one another. Be positive, value who you are. Make it the right decision for yourself.